Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. We got something we are going to take a little brief moment to talk to you about. Got a couple of things that we've been going over, but let's see if we can find. We just talked about the involuntary bankruptcy. Now we're going to talk about this is not what I want. Give me a second, people. Got to shut that off. Okay, this is the wrong document. We're looking for the mortgage law. We're not looking for the voluntary bankruptcy. So, cancel that junk. Uh, give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I knew I had it, y'all. It just, I saved it under the wrong name the last time. And so, you know how when you Russian, you know, and I'm not speaking about Russians, you know, it's okay to be a Russian. It, you know, we don't hate y'all. It's just the, the government that says they hate y'all. But we don't hate y'all. We people, okay? Y'all people, we people, we don't like, we don't hate Russians, okay? All right? Just want to make sure I get that clear. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents. Review of the California Mortgage Law. Now, we're going to review it. Who's reviewing it? You're going to find out that it's attorneys. Examining the authority of the California Department of Business Oversight and its commissioner, which regulate mortgage licenses. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be contacting the commissioner that oversees mortgages in your state. You need to be letting the commissioner know that you have tendered payment and that they have failed to follow the law. See, understanding definitions under the financial uh, finance lenders law and the Residential Mortgage Lending Act. The Residential Mortgage Lending Act is very important for you Californians. You need to understand that. Read it, read it, read it. You become an expert at it and you will save so many people and their properties. Okay? I'm not joking. That's where the rules are. Define the licensing requirements and application process for each type of license offered under California law. Mortgage loan originator license. Finance lender law license. Residential Mortgage Lending Act license. This is the mortgage law for California. That's why I can tell you Residential Mortgage Lending Act is what you need to know. We don't care about the financial lenders law because we know they're going to skirt around that anyway and get very technical with you. Okay? This course provides an overview of the laws and rules that regulate mortgage professionals doing business in the state of California. The topic included in this course are presented according to those outlined by the state as subject to the must be included in order to satisfy the pre-licensing education requirements of the mortgage loan originators. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm going to suggest. Secure and fair enforcement of Mortgage Leasing Licensing Act of 2008. SAFE Act. It's called the SAFE Act. Oh, God, we're safe. Oh, God, we're safe. You're out. Sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my suggestion is that you all take a look, those of you who are in California. But as I said, if this law exists in California, it exists in your state. Okay, let me say it again. California is the root of all new so-called test scenarios, test environments, test demographics. They usually test out new changes. I've already mentioned to you guys, if you go back to the People's Court, the People's Court is small claims court. But you guys remember Judge Wapner or the People's Court? And the people coming in there being stupid. And the People's Court and how Judge Wapner wasn't a judge. They just agreed that that idiot could, I mean, sorry, Judge Wapner wasn't really an idiot. He was actually a nice guy uh, from his television persona. Okay. Hey, before I go on, we're going to talk about Judge Wapner in a minute. I just got this uh, email from somebody, and they're talking about TDA account. Ladies and gentlemen, did I ever say I was going to provide any information about the Treasury Direct account? Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, to say TDA account is redundant. TDA stands for a Treasury Direct account. So when you say TDA account, you're saying TDA, Treasury Direct account, account. Redundant. Uh, this person tells me they just want my honest opinion and let me show you how honest 
an opinion they want. They send the email to me and someone else, but they want my honest opinion. We ain't playing that, y'all. Y'all don't get to call me on conference calls. I'm not here to help you with your little so-called private groups. I told you, that's not what I do. That's, I didn't do that in the past. I'm not going to do that now. I'm not here to satisfy your whims, desires, needs, urges. Okay? Uh, uh, sorry, the other person that just emailed me. I was just checking them because they just came in. The other person just emailed me. Everybody's asking me about SACOM. I keep telling you all, SACOM, I created the organization, but I don't run the organization. That's by design. I never run whatever I create. That's not my duty, my job. However, SACOM is a whole different beast because we're trying to make sure none of the problems that happen over at the Legal Redress Commission will ever happen at SACOM. So we've had to weed out the undesirable elements. That's what the last couple of months have been about. We've been testing the individuals to make sure that they not only can weather the storm, but that they are trustworthy because they're going to be helping you all. If they're going to be helping you all, they have to be trustworthy. SACCOM will get its official start Labor Day 2017, September 5th. So just be prepared. SACCOM will be there. They will answer as many of your questions as you can, but they will not answer questions regarding the videos. This site and SACCOM are not affiliated with each other. Okay, I don't do this site as an agent of SACCOM. I do this site as an agent of my own person. So don't be asking SACCOM about none of the stuff you hear on these videos unless it's specific to what SACCOM offers and provide. You can go to the frequently asked questions section. All right, let's get back to Judge Wapner. Thought I was going to forget, didn't you? You thought I was going to forget. We usually forget. Well, shut the... Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, oh yeah, Judge Wapner. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Judge Wapner, the People's Court, that was small claims court. Small claims court started in California. Like I said, when they're getting ready to roll out something or test out something, especially within the legal system, they start in California. Why? 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 Because of the way California is set up, the way it's designed. Okay, so that being the case, you're going to have laws that are similar to this one. What I'm suggesting to you guys, those of you who know anything about nothing, because many of you know nothing about nothing, Go over the law before you start trying to figure out how to get rid of your debt. Go over the law. See, reorganization plan. I don't know what the governor's reorganization plan is all about, but I do know that I'm going to select text. And I'm going to copy. Where's my copy? Copy! Copy! And this is a PDF that I was downloading. This is a PDF. Let's do the second PDF, too. Paste and go. Oh, it's just so pasty these days. Oh, Lord. Just pasty, pasty, pasty. Pasty, pasty. Hold on. Oh, that's the torrent website. A lot of... Uh oh Oh, uh-oh, got to get that off my my. They ain't supposed to be saying them words on no, no, no blog. Lord have mercy. I ain't never been there before until today, but I don't know. Figured I'd check it out. See, PDF, Rest, the reorganization plan. So my, uh-oh, I'm, I'm all the way up at 10. That don't normally happen. I'm in the living room, kitchen area. So I'm going to let it sit here. Let it do what it do. Got to make it do what it do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, while we're downloading the reorganization plan, and while we're sitting up here allowing us to stay in these high numbers, I am actually surprised because I don't normally get this in this area. So we're going to let it keep at that high rate because that works for me. All right, while it's doing that, and that's a high rate for me as opposed to normal. Let's, uh, uh oh, got to go back here with the hand. Uh, let's make sure you guys understand California law and regulation definition and it's good that you guys go over the definition because you need to know what each thing is considered a lender is any person who is engaged in the business of making consumer loans or commercial loans okay a mortgage loan originator gives you the definition a person is an individual corporation partnership limited liability company joint venture association joint stock company trust 
See? Unincorporated organization, government, or political subdivision of a government. You take a look at the new disclaimer. I even add the information of subdivisions and political subdivisions. Residential mortgage loan. It explains what a residential mortgage loan. So what? Uh-oh, annual audit. You know, you guys, pay attention. Here's the code for California, but all of the banks do an annual audit. A certified audit of the licensee's book, records, and system of internal controls performed by an independent certified public accountant in accordance with the generally accepted accountant principles, GAAP, GAP, and auditing standards, okay? This is what you keep hearing everybody else talk about. We told you, this audit will show you that your loan is already paid for, okay? Oh, look at that, call reports. A report of conditions of the residential mortgage lender and a mortgage servicer, its operations including financial statements and production activity volumes. Ladies and gentlemen, you know you have a right to ask for this. You have a right to ask for the audit and a call report because that's part of RISPA. It deals with your loan. You got to go over the case law and see what judges say you have the right to and what you don't have the right to. Okay? You have the right to find out the financial status of your loan. Okay. Let's see. What else do we need? Don't care about lender. Mortgage loan. Nope. They already did that. Servicing. Servicing. Receives more than three installment payments of principal interest or other amounts placed in escrow. Wait a minute. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Other amounts placed in escrow. Why are your payments being placed in escrow? Because the home is already paid for. You're absolutely right. Because the home is already paid for? Are you kidding me? Is that what? I didn't know that was the correct answer. I was just shouting down an answer because I wanted to be I, I wanted to be heard by somebody. You know, I wanted people to know that I was saying, hey, I want to send a shout out to j Bo and, and Bootleg. And, you know, I want to send a shout out to my homeboy Blue Blood and, you know, my homeboy Blue. You know, and I want to send a shout out to B-Boy and Bob and Mike and Tom and... Would you shut up? No, and I just got to send these shout outs because I didn't know you were going to call on me and let me answer and I didn't know I was going to be right. So I might as well let everybody know that I was right. Okay, getting back to what we were talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, servicing. Your funds are placed in escrow pursuant to the terms of the mortgage loan and performing services related to the receipt of payment on behalf of the holder of the note. So if your funds are placed in escrow, where are they placed in escrow at? What are the terms and conditions of placing it in escrow? You know you have a right to that information, right? It deals with the servicing of your note. When you do a qualified written request, you get to add all of this information and ask for all this information because it deals with your note. Are you all understanding what I'm saying? So when you copy this, you just don't copy California Financial Code. You don't have to copy the code, you just copy the words because the words are gonna be similar to your state. You saw that when we did that, uh, I tell you about the key phrases in, what's the law we're talking about? Uh, statutory interpretation, the key phrases, they use the same phrase all the time. See, financial lender. Now, this is a, pay attention to this phrase, not the financial lender, but financial lender. It says again, financial lender, okay? Financial lender license, a law license, which may be used as a financial lender, a broker, or both. Okay, and then it takes you down to number three. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mortgage Lending Act license. Can't do that. You have to do the Residential Mortgage Lending Act license, and you'll pull up the information. See, I like the fact that this has PDFs. Okay. And this is basically review of California mortgage law. And this is how you get to this form. You want to do it on the internet because you're on the internet, then you can uh, click on the PDF. Further, an exempt company registration is also available and may be voluntarily obtained by a mortgage company that is exempt under the law, but that has employees acting as mortgage loan originator. Mortgage loan originator licensing exemption. Mortgage loan originator is look mlo like i told you that's a legal term so you notice how i didn't say licensing exemption i just said mortgage loan originator not because all the letters were capitalized but because of how the statement is made this is a name somebody created mortgage loan originator and you'll mortgage loan originator 
Mortgage Loan Originator. You'll see it will say that all throughout. That's called terminology, legal terminology. Well, can you find another one? Yes, of course I can. Let's see. Industrial loan company, that's one, but that's you're not going to find too much on that. Insurance company, trust company, you'll find stuff on each one of those. Those are legal terms as well, but we're looking. Now, here is the other one. Federally chartered. Okay, and a wholly owned subsidiary or wholly owned sub, wholly owned is another legal term. They even have the hyphens letting you know that they are special terms. Okay, so you have to pick out the special terms and with the special terms, then you do the research by doing, see, financial lender. Financial lender is the key phrase here. Finance lenders, finance lenders, finance lenders. Let's see if we can see any more finance lenders in this paragraph. Let's see, any more? I've got three of them. Looking for fourth, looking for fifth, looking for sixth. Oh no, we're not gonna make it home. Okay, can't do it. No more finance lenders. Well, we had three in the one paragraph. That's how you do it. That's how you read legalese. You take that term, you research that term, and then you'll better understand the context of what's being said. Remember, you have to go over, it's called the nine principles of statutory interpretation. So this is going a little slow. See, that's the problem. 32 minutes. That's what happens when you tether. No, uh, statutory interpretation. Let's do here. Here. There we go. And we have to do this so it doesn't go to the home page. I said that so it doesn't go to the home page. And nine. What I did, ladies and gentlemen, is I just put the nine principles of statutory interpretation. I have two more videos to do today. One video I'm going to be doing an update to the county recorder where the vital statistics deputy director called me. And I called her back because I was driving, operating a motor vehicle for hire. Anyway, um, I called her back and we had a conversation. You will be able to hear her, but you'll barely be able to hear her. So there will be no music in the background. I'll be letting you listen to that, and then I'll be chiming in and telling you how stupid they think I am. What kind of fool am I? And how much I didn't appreciate them, thinking they could play me for a fool. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pause you, because ain't no need of y'all staying on here waiting for that to open up. And I'm going to go and get myself presentable. Sorry, it wasn't even a second. It had already showed up. See, nine principles of statutory interpretation. I put an ALS. But anyway, statutory interpretation, the guide for reading and interpreting and applying statutes. Okay, I'm going to download that PDF because I think that's going to be statutory interpretation, general principle, and recent trends. Got this one somewhere, but we're going to download it again. Use my internet download manager. That's that piece of junk. And I'm going to use the Internet Download Manager again. That's that piece of junk. Okay. And I'm going to let them do what they do. And I'll title them later. Public Law, Unit 9, Principles of Interpreting, Interpretation of Written Blah Blah Blah. The Rules of Statutory Interpretation, Translegal. The 12 Statutory Interpretation and Interpretations Act of Look at that. There wasn't 12, it's number 12. So Statutory Interpretation and Interpretations Act, 1999. Now do you guys see how important? The art of statutory construction. Now do you guys see how important this is? Because once you grab hold of statutory interpretation, once you understand how to interpret statute, now you can move forward. There's a problem. Yeah, we need to put the status up there. So I need to see how many. The other ones didn't download. Hmm. I guess they're just URLs. So I'll actually have to open them up. Yeah, because see, look at this one. It timed out. Connection timed out. Time out! 
Well, it didn't time out too much because it finished, it completed, but it's a URL. So that one won't help me. So what I'll have to do is I'll open this up in another window. Oh, it's already going there. Okay, but I'll come back. Luther, Luther, here and now, I promise to love faithfully. You're all I need here and now. You guys, if you didn't know Luther, and I don't think his murder was an accident. Did you say murder? That's right. Starting now. Starting now. I believe in love. Starting here. I'm starting right here. Anyway, yes, I'm a fool. All right. Chapter 12. Statutory interpretation. Now, this, it says it's 321 kilobytes. You got a kilobyte? Man, I've never had to kill anything. But if you got a kilobyte, can you tell me what it did wrong so that you would have to kill it? Okay. Pay attention. Reaching an interpretation of an act, a court will rely on certain rules and conventions of statutory interpretation as well as fundamental principles of law. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, if the court can interpret statute, so can you, which means so can the jury. You will hear a judge say that only they can find the finding of the facts. You can tell the judge straight out, if I understand statutory interpretation, why can't I find facts? Uh-oh. You just messed up. All right, the Interpretation Act is the primary source of the rules of statutory interpretation in New Zealand, although some of its provisions are supplemented in, by common law. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is for New Zealand. We have to go up to the top. I believe this is not for the U.S. Okay. And that's the problem. This is for New Zealand, but now you see that all of the countries run off of the same junk. Okay. But it's going to... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, let me see if I can show you about the uniformity of law. You're going to find the very same thing for statutory interpretation in New Zealand that you find in the United States. So what you're going to have to do is... Have you considered the key principles of statutory interpretation? Part 1. Let's see what are some of the key principles. And I want to make sure you understand that. <sighs> the purpose of the provision of this act is a key aid in interpretation. Each new act should have a purpose provision, meaning the purpose of the act. And if possible, every provision in the act should be interpreted consistently with the purpose provision. That's why you'll see at the very beginning of their junk, they put purpose, and then they explain what the purpose of the act is for. The large pool of sources that the courts will draw on in interpreting an act highlights the need to ensure that the act has internal coherence, and means cohesiveness, and it all comes together and it, there are no contradictions, and a clear purpose or policy objective that is adequately reflected in the provisions of the act and any explanatory material. Okay? This is what they do. All right, we're going to go back because we don't need to be here. This is New Zealand. We need to be living in America. Ow, ow. Ah, ah. Sorry. Took me back to Rocky. <laughs> and Riddick Boat. Not Riddick. It wasn't Riddick. Who was it? It was Clubber Lane. It was Clubber. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to my girl talking about talking about talking about my girl my girl my girl oh this finished okay i wasn't i didn't know it finished okay good let's open 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 nope that's not what i wanted then it didn't finish Hold on. This might be it. 
open, open, open. Where you at? I said open. All right, open. All right. I bet you say, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention to this. Administrative order of the chief administrative judge of the courts. Pay attention. Chief administrative judge of the court. When I tell you that the judges are all administrative officers, pursuant to the authority vested in me and upon consul consultation with and approval by the administrative board of the courts, I hereby amend effective and immediately section 202.5-B of the Uniform Civil Rules of the Supreme and County Courts related to electronic filing of actions in the Supreme Court to read as follows. This is the Chief Judge of the Supreme Court. Electronic filings in the Supreme Court consensual program. All right, Chief Administrator of the Courts. They're all administrative people. That's why I pulled this up. I don't need to know about the electronic filing because the electronic filing doesn't mean nothing to us. Okay. And you notice how this was the original draft, how they put a line through all of that means that doesn't apply anymore. And there must have been a situation where somebody thought about, uh oh, consent may also be obtained by stipulation. People, 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 whenever you send something to the court electronically, you have to withdraw the consent for them to communicate back with you electronically. You can use their court address, but you will have them use your mailing address. Do not allow them to communicate with you by email because this is where they get to just simply deny your junk and tell you to have a coke and a smile. No, you want to hold them, bound them, keep them in place. So again, this is just to let you know how the courts are operating a little bit on how to do your research on statutory interpretation. Okay, I need, um, see I looked that one up because that said 12 and so I know I thought that maybe they added some more but they didn't. They didn't, didn't, didn't. We can go to Georgetown. Man, can we go to Georgetown? Man, I ain't, I've been to Georgetown but I ain't been to Georgetown. What do you mean Georgetown? You mean like George Washington town? The town of George Washington? That's what Georgetown is. Y'all didn't know? Well, now you know. And that's half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having a pretty good Saturday. It's actually kind of interesting that everything is going smoothly. Why? Because I realized something. I realized we've been doing what we need to do, but we haven't been doing what we need to do. You know what I'm saying, Vern? Lord, 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 have mercy. So I'm getting ready to do what I need to do. I'm going to put y'all on pause so we can pull that document up. Look, ladies and gentlemen, many of you are getting involved in this, this game, this dealing with the so-called lackeys of the agencies. Many of you are still got this little, this little brainwashing that was done. Ladies and gentlemen, the system is not stealing from you. It's not trying to keep you in darkness. The system is trying to protect itself. The system is alive, and anyone who works for the system will tell you the system is not perfect, but it functions. And that's all they're concerned with is the functioning of the system. Everybody keeps talking about this great awakening. It's not an awakening. Okay, we, we weren't asleep. But the Matrix said we, yes, 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 fine. We were asleep symbolically. But we were not asleep. We were wide awake the whole time all of this was going on. So can you call it sleepwalking? No. Nah. We'll call it cognitive comatose syndrome. CCS. Just made it up. Cognitive comatose syndrome, uh, <laughs> syndrome. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people out there who are eyes are wide shut and they're walking around in a daze, not knowing what's going on, not paying attention to nothing. 
because that's what they are. They're just existing. Michael Jackson say it, stop existing and start living. So stop existing, fools, people, morons. That's right. Because if you're not paying attention, if you weren't paying attention, and you can only be likened to a fool, you can only be likened to an ignorant person, you can only be likened to a moron, because they don't pay attention. Don't get me? Every time somebody doesn't pay attention, aren't they always called a moron? Are they always called stupid? Are they always called a fool? So again, cognitive comatose syndrome. CCS! How may I help you? Anyway. Statutory interpretation has a bearing on everything because the people who are giving you guys all of this information on the internet, most of them have no clue as to what statutory interpretation is. Never paid attention to it. Okay, that's why I can read a statute and I can tell you exactly what it's saying based upon statutory interpretation, not based upon some judge's interpretation because the judge don't always interpret it correctly and always co are corrected by the appeals court. And the appeals court doesn't always correct it correctly and read it correctly and they're corrected by the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court often add their own interpretation of things. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, man did this. They created these so-called nine principles of statutory interpretation. Let me let you understand something. You hear me talking about scripture, talking about Bible. The Bible is not left up to any interpretation by man. It was never permitted. You can't interpret what God is trying to say. That's stupid. How can you interpret what he's trying to say? If he is God, the Almighty, how can you interpret what he is trying to say? Well, first, he doesn't try to say anything. He actually says it. He, his words mean what they say and they say what they mean. There is no interpretation. The only thing that can be interpreted in scripture is the prophecies. The Bible makes that quite clear. But because the Bible is written in the format of every scripture being backed up by at least two more scriptures that will support or stand as a witness or testimony for the other scripture, then it doesn't need interpretation. It just needs you to find out where are the maxing scriptures. Like a puzzle. Are you saying it's like a jigsaw puzzle? No, because you don't have to jig it, nor do you have to saw it, okay? You just have to realize. Well, let's get back into our statutory interpretation, which is not like scripture, where you have to match it up with two or three others, because statutory interpretation, statutes contradict themselves all the time. We're gonna go over, do you see the very first thing, purpose? That's why they do their books this way, because of the understanding of statutory interpretation. There's always going to be a purpose section, especially when you're dealing with a lawyer. Whether you're working in a law firm or a government agency or a public interest organization, I was in a government agency, there is a strong chance you will be required to analyze and interpret statutes for your clients. For example, your client may want you to determine whether a particular statute will provide the client with a cause of action given in a particular set of circumstances. Or perhaps your client is a corporation trying to determine how a recent enactment of statute would affect its long-term business plan. Understanding the tools and techniques of statutory interpretation will help you to understand the possible implications a statute may have on your client's interests. Although the task of statutory interpretation can be quite nuanced and complicated like that word did you just see how they put the word nuance and complicated in the same fashion thinking that the word nuance is not a legalese term anyway this handout oh god it's a handout i didn't ask for no handouts i'm not poor i can afford i i i i ain't, I ain't destitute anyway 21 pages although the task of to interpretation can be quite nuanced and complicated this handout will provide you with a few handy tools that will help you to discern the meaning of statute even when the terms of statute seems unclear and ambiguous statutes cannot be and they cannot be ambiguous that is the number one thing a statute cannot be if it's ambiguous it is void okay 
This handout will address what to do before you begin interpreting a statute, page one. Tools for analyzing statute, page two. Additional helpful interpretive suggestions, page 10. And theories of statutory interpretation, page 13. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so do yourselves a favor. The name of this document is the Georgetown one, a guide to reading, comma, interpreting, and applying statute. Okay, that's the name of the document. That's what you want to Google. This is the PDF. I told you I was downloading from Georgetown. This is the, where is it at? George, George, Georgie, Georgie, Porgy, Puddin' Pie. This is the Law Georgetown Education. Okay. Then we got this one. Yeah, this is another PDF. I'll wait for it. I think it's already PDF and PDF and that doesn't sound like a good thing to say. Man, he just over there PDF and see that don't sound like a good thing to say. Statutory interpretation, general principles, and recent trends. This is the one that I've had before, and this is Congressional Research Service. So this is going to be your benchmark. This is where you're going to start. Why? Because specialists in public law. Statutory interpretation is important. Many of you are bringing in all these lawsuits and this case law and all this junk and you're getting this case law from these other sites and these people telling you what the law is supposed to say and what's not supposed to say and you don't understand that most of that is junk. You get in the court and you're sitting up there dealing with the court and the court saying this and the court saying that and you don't understand that most of that junk is junk. A court, the judge will tell you whatever he wants to tell you as long as you believe it and walk away, he's done his job. Because he's saying to himself, well, that's another idiot I ain't got to worry about. Okay. I'm looking to see Constitution Statutory Direction of Interpretation. Yeah, common law principles of generous interpretation in written constitutions. Current principles of common law principles of interpretation, generous and flexible. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going over this document, but I would strongly suggest that you go to this page and take a look at this, those of you who have an interest. This is taken from Van, V-A-N, V as in Victor, A as in Albert, N as in Nancy, U as in Uncle, A as in Albert, T as in Tom, U as in Uncle, dot U-S-P dot A-C dot F-J forward slash courses forward slash L-A-207 underscore public underscore law underscore one forward slash l a two zero seven underscore unit u n i t nine underscore interpretation dot h t m l that's a whole lot you just said can you just copy and paste it i'm gonna do it just this once but y'all better leave me alone ain't got time to be doing this I told you this is saturday i'm having a good day saturday and you're gonna sit up here and ask me to copy and paste well that's all i'm saying here. shut up Okay, you want to copy and paste? <laughs> All right, this is a case that I was working on, but I need which one of you? If it will let me, Social Security. Social Security is a bank, y'all. Is it going to let me? It ain't going to let me, y'all. I'm trying to get it to let me, but it's saying we ain't letting you do jack. And I'm telling them my name ain't Jack, Jack. And it's saying, oh, yeah, your name is Jack, mother. And I'm saying, don't be calling me no mother. And it's saying, oh, you call you, you a mother. And I'm like, okay, all right, it's on now. You want to play? And that's what we're doing. we playing. So I'm about to, as soon as my, I have too many Microsoft Words open. And the way my system is set up with all the Microsoft Words open, they beat up each other. They have, they fight. One doesn't want the other to be open. The other one doesn't want the other to be open. So they just fight. Just fighting. That's all they do is fight. Look, it stopped with seven seconds to go. That should not be. So what I do, because this one says disconnect. So that's my problem. I'm going to pause it, wait for it to say start, and then I'm going to try to see if I can get it to reconnect. While that's happening, I'm going to put the link here. 
So y'all leave me the, alone. All right, we're gonna make this, this, and you just have to pause the video. Let's uh, make it blue. How do you make it blue? You do it that way. So there you go. There you go. All right. And you need to pay attention. Underscore, underscore, underscore. See? Underscore, underscore. Here, U N I T is one word, no underscore, but again, underscore. So that's what that dash means, underscore. FJ, I know FJ. Do you guys know FJ? I know FJ. Well, anyway, this is for that site that I just showed you. So I'm hoping that this video will help some of you, especially in dealing with statutory interpretation. All right? Have a very good day. Have a very good life. Have a very good night. Whatever you have, let it be. My hope, very good. Because we're going to let the music play on, play on, play on. Oh, this is all night long. Goodbye.